Hey everyone, welcome back to episode, uh, I think eight, seven, eight, I've, we've lost count already, of uh, strategic angling. Uh, this one should be an exciting one today. We're talking all things swim jigs, something these two are, are very passionate about. Um, don't need a huge introduction, but we got JJ Patton and Chuck Pfizer, and the, my name is Brady Hanna, and between the three of us, we have, um, I think we're talking zero Bassmaster Classic appearances? Zero. Almost one. Yeah, JJ had an almost, so. Pretty qualified to talk about these things. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but JJ, you want to give us an overview of, um, of swim jigs? Uh, you're a big fan. Yeah, I'm a. It's probably the if I could grab one lure and use it for the rest of my life, it would probably be a quarter ounce swim jig. Um, I just think the versatility of it, and we're going to go over some of that. You know, you can you can make it do a lot of different things depending on what trailer you put on. Um, they come through cover extremely well. They catch a lot of fish. Um, when you're pre-fishing, for example, a lot of times I'll have three tied on without a hook on it. I'll flip it, swim it, crawl it, slow roll it. I mean, you can you can fish it a lot of different ways. Some of that can be dictated by what trailer you put on, whether you want a little more lift or a little more swimming it a little deeper. Um, the, a lot of companies are making swim jigs now. Um, the main thing we're going to talk about kind of I guess is the northern style swim jig which is more of the pointy head uh, for fishing through vegetation type stuff you know you get down in the south and when they swim a jig they call it it's more of a shaking of a jig uh, that Alabama shake where they'll fish it almost as a top water um, but, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit too but I think um, it's a great bait Everybody needs to learn how to use it. It's really easy to use. Fish eat it. Um, they're easy to hook on it. They're easy to catch on it. So it's good if you're taking kids. There's also usually a weed guard so you don't get hooked in the side of the head when your kid's throwing it out there. Um, but but I think that's pretty much an introduction. Um, yeah, they'll have a uh, a 28 or like a 30 degree line tie, you know, versus a flipping jig. We'll have a much where are they running. 60 60 degree yeah so and that helps it come right at you so you're you're you know it's it's angled slightly up so there'll be a little bit of lift but it'll come at you instead of instead of dragging it on the bottom or, or jigging it off the bottom right um, they're not super super um, snagless as far as wood um, but you can kind of get around that a little bit depending on which brand you choose and how heavy a weed guard you put in it. Um, the, I use a lot of Bravarni, that's probably my go-to for, for most everything. And he will do uh, a heavy or a light weed guard in there, which, which I think helps. Um, also, we talked a little bit in the last episodes, if you use kind of a double tail trailer, you can make it come over wood a little better. If you're using a swim bait and it's doing this, it's gonna end up gonna snag on the wood a little bit. Yeah. You know, and Bavarni probably is a true, true northern swim yeah. jig. I mean, that is first and foremost, is a true northern swim jig. Where Dem jigs, it's a little different. It's not really a true, true swim jig, even though he has a lighter weed guard. It's a little more versatile as far as you can flip it to. Yeah. You can swim or flip it, hence the name, flip swim jig. Um, does have a screw lock on it, um, but it's a little more versatile to flip and as well and it doesn't get hung up on the wood quite as much with the weed guard um, a little closer to the tip of the point or the point of the hook so but and he does have a heavier gauge hook as well so if yeah you're, if you're in super heavy stuff fishing 50 to 65 pound braid right you might have a tendency Bravarni's hook is a custom gamakatsu hook it's a 28 degree bend it is a little bit light wire which which helps in hookups but if you're dragging a a really big fish out of really heavy stuff, you yeah. could straighten it out. You could use 30 pound probably. Yeah. Power I, pro. Though. I use 40 no most of the yeah. time. But yeah. These you can probably get up to like 50. You could probably throw 65, but that's that's pretty heavy, I think. But 50 is what I use a lot of times. Um, and these bad boys with the Sawash hook that we made last year, yeah. comparable to a no jack, you, could, you can hammer on these yeah. as hard as yeah. you like. It does create a big hole, but and you're, if you're in that right vegetation, that's definitely the hook to have. Right. So maybe let's get into 
you know, that's a little bit about swim jigs. It's a little bit about the kinds that you guys like. Let's talk about what situations you're using which swim jigs for. Yeah. I think the best thing that a swim jig is good for is locating fish. You mm -hmm. can fish really fast with a swim jig. You can go down the bank and just fire, 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 you know, at all the different targets. And even when you're in the pads, you can, uh, you can get a lot of fishing done quickly with a swim jig. Mm -hmm. That's what I like it. And then when you find the fish, you can slow it down and see if that's really what they want or if they want something a little bit different. But locating fish, especially in the pads and the grass, they're very, very good at doing that. Yeah, it's a su superb locator and it and it works all year. I mean, I, th I think probably you get up close to 48, 50 degree water. That's probably where it starts to work well. I mean, it works less than that. I've caught them in 38 degree water, but um, I think, you know, kind of getting that, once you start in that pre-spawn, the fish are moving shallow all the way through the fall, um, it works. And you can, you know, as you go through the season, you know, you want to start, you start with maybe a, a green pumpkin orange or a black and blue um, to mimic more crawdad type stuff. As you get towards the spawn, you might go like a perch or a bluegill color because the bluegills are trying to get on the spawning beds and eat the eggs. And then most of the summer, you're going to kind of want white or shad color as, they, yep. as the bait changes. And depending on what lake you're on, if there's no shad, for example, like Lost yep. Grove, you'd probably tend to more throw a, a bluegill or a crappie color, um, kind of base it on the forage that they're eating uh, color-wise. Right. And so, then you just, you can match up your trailers, Yeah. you know, to the, what you're trying to use it or make it look like a crawl shad you know bluegill and you just you can either use like a shad type bait you can use a crawl type bait a lot of guys actually use still a single tail grub yeah that's that's you the know? old school way yeah. and that's and that's I think a lot of guys up north use that a lot still yeah seems like but uh you just match it up and like you said, you go to the crawl baits, they're a little bit slower, might stay at the top a little bit higher in the water column, or sometimes you're burning a, you know, a Kitek behind it, but it comes to the grass so well. Yeah. You, know, you don't have to worry about it getting hung up. The fewer appendages you have, the better it comes through grass. As you also, like you have a menace or something, you can rig it flat so that has a little more lift and comes over wood a little better. You can also rig it mm -hmm. uh, up and down so the tails are, are flapping side to side, which um, would probably be more of a bait fish imitator. Um, you know, sometimes you'll get like a like a big bite swimming craw or a kamikaze craw. Those are good. Um, they have dual flappers. I think when the water's cold and you want it slow, you know, you throw that bulky bait with the big flappers. I yeah. think pre-spawn, that's, that's really good because you can just crawl it and it's still just, you know, coming through and those flappers are, are kicking. Yeah, and a lot of times, too, the swim jigs, they'll have a lot less skirt material. Yeah. You know, your flipping jigs will have, you know, 52 to 60 strands, whereas a swim jig might only have 24 to 36 so yeah. it really lets the action of the trailer that you're putting it on kind of control the bait. Yep. Yeah, you so. want to cut that skirt when you put it on. Like, for example, if you're throwing a, a suicide shad or a, a little dipper or something, cut, trim that skirt so it doesn't get into that tail. It lets that tail work. All right. Um, it's... Uh, it's a great bait. It, uh, it does a lot and catches a lot of fish. The other thing about, you know, to look at, like, like Bravarni's jigs, it's a single layer. So uh, there's, a, there's only, if you hang it like this, the skirts are only, it's only one layer. It's not a double layer. Now, if you were wanting more lift or you were doing the shake or you're flipping, yep. then you get the double layer, like, like, um, like the Dem jigs, like John makes, the, you know, they're, it's a double layer, it's more bulk, it's more lift. Mm -hmm. but this has a little more reaction because it's puffed out almost, right. almost, you know, you can see it's kind of wider out and it, it really it really moves with every shake of your rod or every time it hits something, it'll, it'll flare. Yeah. 
you can also go, you know, living rubber, uh, you know, living rubber with some tinsel in it, or you can go silicone without tinsel, or you can go any combination. The, the, it's really endless what you can do with yeah. it. A lot of different colors in swim jigs. So you can match any hatch that you yeah. prefer to fish. No problem. Probably to start with, I'd get four. You know, you want a shad, you want a black and blue, you want a green pumpkin, bluegill type thing, and then. Um, but you can get kind of crazy. You know, you can you can throw basically whatever you want. Um, I have noticed a lot of times, like if the water's super muddy, swim jigs are not going to attract them as much as like we talked about chatter baits or spinner baits, but sometimes if you have a contrast, like you put a white, white or chartreuse on the back of a black and blue, that contrast, they'll see that and it'll be a little bit of a flash. Mm -hmm. um, you could add a rattle to them too, Yep. you know, if you want to. If you're twitching the rattle a little bit, you can get that clacking. So, um, so that's a little bit about the general, you know, generalities of swim jigs and it, JJ uses a Bravani, would you say 99? Pretty much percent of the time. time. I like Dan. I like the company. I like the way the jigs are made. Yeah. They're they're hand tied. That's the other thing that yeah. I like is that a hand tied jig. Uh, yep. and, and John's are also the Dem jigs are also yeah. hand tied, which I think is important. Um, it keeps the integrity. It keep otherwise the colors are sliding around, and you may not have what you thought was on the bottom on the bottom anymore. Right. Well, so Chuck, too, let's hear let's hear Chuck what. You're using most of the season for. I use days. Dem jigs. Um, I do use RC tackle once in a while too. Uh, he's got a really good uh, light wire hook one, um, but most of the time I'm using the heavier hook just because we're fishing grass so much, mm -hmm. you know, in our areas. But I really like the Dem jigs because it's got the screw lock, and like JJ said, you know, it's important to have a hand tied. And then the screw lock benefits it as well because you know when you get stuff grass on your lure you can slap the water you don't have to worry about the weed guard or the uh, skirt coming down mm -hmm. or the uh, bait flying off so okay. it's a really good uh, good benefit to have that hand tied with the screw lock hand tied screw lock or uh, and Bravarni's has uh, he has a wire keeper yeah so, so it keeps the bait on too what do you guys look for in a you know, bait keeper, or do you put super glue, or do you do anything like that, or do you find that... If I don't use a screw lock, I definitely use super glue, yeah. yeah. I try not to use a lot, um, because Northern really likes swim jigs also, and <laughs> and if you're swimming a, a pro swimmer on the back, a Northern will come up and bite the tail off, and then you got half of a, half of a, a lure stuck there with super glue, and it goops up the, at the head. When you put these on a Bravarni, he does have that little, uh, you can't really see it probably, but the, the jag, when you put it on, what I'll do is when you get to the point where it's about ready to hit that thing is I'll lift up and push on so that that, that doesn't carve a canal all the way through. It's like a V-shaped. Yeah, it just, then it just, then that little thing can grab. But I, I try not to use super glue and I do like the screw lock. I think that's, uh, that's a fantastic thing, but again, it takes longer probably. And uh, yeah, you gotta screw it on there. But they, the baits don't come off. But no, like you said, you might northern. They like swim jigs. Yeah, they do. So. You need a lot of them around here. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you know, I know Bravarnis are not unfortunately available at K and K. Um, is there some ones that we know Matt has that you know? Yeah, nice. um, before we get to that though, um, JJ said he likes quarter ounce. Now keep in mind, swim jigs come in quarter, three eighths, half. Sometimes people are five eighths. You know, it all depends on what. I personally like the half ounce the best um, swimming a jig because I feel like I can keep it on the top of the water column or I can let it get deep. Um, the quarter ounce is good too, especially if you're fishing with pads. You can almost fish it like a frog. You know, it can stay up on top of the pads, but, you know, get yourself, you know, a quarter, three-eighths and a half and just kind of see, you know, which one you best prefer. Um, but as far as Matt, I mean, he carries, he carries Dem jigs. I know he carries RC Tackle, um, I think Six Cents. Uh, he carries the Hackney, um, which has that Sawashi hook uh, swim jig. Um, 
I don't I don't know of any others that he's he might have some uh dirty dirty jigs. So um, yeah, dirty jigs as well. Dirty I jigs makes some a, of those. a no jack that has this big hook. Yep, and so does the Strike King. Action yep. tags are yep. same way. But uh and that's a great hook for around here, especially when the vegetation gets really, really thick. Yep. Um, okay, so that's that's a bit about overview of swim jigs. Um, do you guys want to get into trailers, or do you want to talk about rods and reels and line? Number, what's your favorite trailer, JJ? Uh, favorite trailer is probably either a Little Dipper or. Um, a single tail grub, five inch single tail grub, Yamamoto. Yeah. yeah, I like the Kitek the best. 3.8 Kitek is my favorite. Um, I'd use the little dipper. It just seems like the Kitek is just a hair longer than the dipper. So it just seems like it sticks out just a little bit. Dem jigs the skirts a little thicker than uh, the Bravarni. So I prefer the Kitek. Yeah, and you're gonna have a little more kick. That tail's bigger, yep. so if you're going with a heavier weight, yeah, it's gonna and that's probably better. why I like it uh, better. If you throw a lightweight and try to turn these tails, sometimes it won't turn as much, as well. Like when it drops, it'll just kind of fall. It won't yeah. paddle. And then if you're trying to imitate a crawl, the ultra wide speed crawl is really, really hard to beat. It's got a couple yep. kickers on it. Um, especially if you're going down the bank and you're kind of pitch and flip and you're doing a little bit of both. You got wood around and you're trying to, you know, dissect the area. That's really good bait. Yeah, then the menace. Menace yeah. grub is a is a this is a really good bait. I'm, I'm getting to be very fond of it. It it kicks real good. Like I said earlier, you can rig it sideways or up and down. Um, one thing I would stress when you're talking about trailers is whatever trailer you pick, make sure you rig that thing straight on. So most of the trailers will have like like the Kitex will have a little slot, and sort of the the big bites have a slot where you want to put your hook in and come directly out of the middle of that thing because if you have this thing cockeyed just a little it's not going to swim very well and you're not going to get as many bites yeah, you might as well tear it off and same thing like on a on a on a double tail make sure you rig that thing so the hook is directly in between the tails or directly above the tail so that you're not so it's not off kilter right. a lot of times you'll see a seam in the bait where you can try to run yep. it right down it yeah, most of them have that. Yeah. All right, so the, the other thing to think about when you're throwing a, a single tail grub, especially uh, a Yamamoto or a Zoom Fat Albert, is is I like to rig it so that the tail goes down opposite the hook. So you're gonna have, and you're gonna wanna rig this real, real straight. There's a little seam in most of these grubs that you can rig along, but you're gonna want the tail to go down where the hook goes up. If you go like, if you go up like this, the profile is different. The tail seems to not kick as well because of the skirt and the disruption. Um, and this way it also lifts it up a little bit and comes over cover a little better. Uh, yeah, and sometimes that tab actually hits the hook and yeah. sticks it a little It'll bit, especially out. with those sharp hooks. Another uh, trailer we forgot to mention too, that if you really want a lot of action, a lot of action on the back of a swim jig, the Big Bite Swimming Crawl is a really good one. We did a bunch of, uh, I think we did what, five special colors? I don't know what you guys did. Five. I think there was five or six special colors that Matt did. Um, and Dem Jigs is matching up swim jigs to actually match those five specific colors. Um, but that Swimming Crawl is something to look at too if you're the fish are real aggressive. And I will say on the Swimming Crawl, you get the action when you really move that with mm -hmm. the swim jig but if you're reeling it slow those tails don't flap and I would maybe suggest a the kamikaze crawl where the tails have bubbles in them and they're a little thinner yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want a slow 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 roll and get the flap maybe not the swim crawl yeah. but if you I want burn to, it I burn that if you want to move crawl. the swim jig the swim crawl has got good yeah. flap that's the only thing because there are times that swimming that bait back as fast as you can they get them they could bite it yeah. I, I like that rage craw too that's yep. in the in the early spring because those things are you know, either the rage craw or the super speed craw both they have those big floppers and you can put a quarter or even three sixteenth ounce jig with yeah. those and just crawl it when they're when they're real early season before yeah. they're super aggressive 
I do that yeah. with the quarter ounce and you can actually wake that bait. Yeah. It really cause a lot of top water. And the reason that emotion. does that is because those craws have thinner tails and yeah. the nice, I think they're rounded fl yeah. flanges on the uh, yeah. edge of them. Yeah. 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 So be aware of that. If you think you're slow rolling something, you you know, you are, but you also got to make sure your trailer's still doing something for you, not just back there dead weight. Yeah. Yeah. And when you throw a swim jig, there's definitely the right rod and the wrong rod. Yep. To throw a swim jig. So let's get into that. What What's the rod that you, you know, recommend or type of rod you recommend for our northern style, you know, the Bravarnies, the RC Tackle, the lighter northern style? I only throw jigs. two Dobbins rods, of course, styles. I throw the 734 yep. the most. But when I step up to the bigger hook, the Swashi hook, I will go to a 735. Yep, yep. But the 734, 90 some percent of the time is the, it's just a little bit slower action. It's, you don't lose many fish once yeah. you hook them with that. I think rod. throwing a, throwing a northern swim jig, you want, you want a rod that has a little bit of tip in it. And that 734 definitely does. Yeah. If you, if you have a, a broomstick style rod, it just doesn't let them load up and, it, and you can watch you know, videos of guys throwing these things and what it, it's almost like a crankbait, you know, you're mm -hmm. just reeling it and then it, that rod loads up and then when it loads up, you just kind of lean and that, with a gamakatsu hook, that thing will stick right in there. So you, you, you want, whatever rod you throw, you want it to be, um, to have a little bit of give at the tip, but also have a lot of backbone because you are fishing this in, in vegetation and you're going to need to move them out. Like a rattle trap, I'm mostly just snatching yeah. it out of the grass and, yeah. you know, we're getting ready to go to Gunnersville and do that same thing and you get too stiff a rod and you're just moving it too too far and they don't get a chance to suck that bait in. Yeah. And, and to give somebody a perspective, if you know, you don't use swim jigs a ton, like a, like a year ago. I had a few swim jigs, I didn't have a ton, I didn't really know how to fish them. I started watching and fishing with JJ and I realized that, you know, these Northern series ones originally, I was like, you know, not, not a big hook. I don't want to throw them. I can't hook set. They were frustrating to me. JJ was just crushing fish in front of me and I was getting just skunked. So, um, like he was saying is the, you know, the, the patience to just reel into them and yeah. let the fish really take it because this has a lighter weed guard, like an, almost like a crankbait. Yeah, that's a that's a that's the real deal advice on that. Um, yeah, especially the light wire swim jig. The Bravarni swim jig is the perfect one where you just reel into it yeah, and you it, do it not step on itself. Hook. Yeah, when you get to the bigger hooks, yeah, you then you're gonna have to start punching so, them yeah. pretty hard. So these are the two swim jigs I primarily use. Is you know I'd say sixty percent Bravarni, and then when the fish are you know in wood or I want to have your hook, I'll switch to the ones that we were making that made by Match the Hatch um, with the Sawash hook. Similar to like a no-jack or yeah. maybe not quite the Dems, but it's a big five-out hook and I use the 735 with braid and that one I do set hook because it's not a real into them jig. Um, yeah, you won't you won't flex the hook no, in no. those no-jacks at all. No. Okay, so uh, anything else swim jigs wise we're going to cover, JJ? I think line, we didn't touch on line. I, yeah. I usually throw 40 to 50 pound braid. Uh, if you get any lighter than 40, it tends to cut into itself on the spool. I feel like it's too thin sometimes, and especially when you're yeah. when you're wrenching them out, then it'll p have a pinch point. The next cast you make, you'll throw it. It'll hit that. Lose your trailer, everything goes fine. I will yeah. throw fluorocarbon also. Um, you know, usually fourteen to seventeen pound fluorocarbon, um, especially if I'm in open water or if it's super clean water. I know, you know, you, you talk about the way we fish them, but, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, Tom Monsour was down on Smith Lake and throwing a quarter ounce swim jig in 15 feet of water with a little trailer. And you can do that. You just crawl it on the bottom just yeah. like a crankbait, and it swims along. And, yeah. you know, you just got to be patient. If you're going to do that type of thing and you're open water, or you're going to need fluorocarbon. You yeah. wouldn't want braid. Yeah, I only use, I use 18 pound fluorocarbon. For that situation but most of the time i'm using 50 pound braid uh, just in the grass i just don't trust yeah. fluorocarbon in the heavy grass no yeah it's and i and i feel like the way i fish it and when you lean into them the the braid kind of helps with that there's no stretch so you don't yeah. you know that that hook will go right in and i think um 
it's just how I'm comfortable. And I think it's a reaction bite. I mean, just like a spinner bait or a mm -hmm. chatter bait or anything, it, most of the time it's a, a reaction bite. And I don't think the line affects it. And the other thing is you're fishing around vegetation a lot. And, um, you know, there's grass everywhere. So what's a little green power probe? And it's, yeah. it's not going to really show they up. They hit Alabama rigs. Yeah, exactly. You know, with a whole bunch of metal hanging off of them. So, you know, I don't think, unless you're in an alter, alter clear, body of water i don't think it makes that big of a difference yeah i wouldn't because the fish is king more on the movement the action rather yeah than the... it's reacting to it versus you know it's not it's not getting to see it for a long period of time all right uh jj and i we know we're kind of just jumping all over but is there any specific colors you'd like to to give away here today that you like to use i mean i think you need a shad you need a, I, I like bravoni's fairy phantom is my favorite it's got a little purple it's got a little silver tinsel i like a black and blue sometimes with a little bit of purple tinsel or blue tinsel um uh and then some variation of um a green pumpkin these are green pumpkin orange right here but i i think i like the blue olive which is kind of a kind of a uh, green pumpkin blue flake um you, you want something like a blue yellow something like a shad and then a black and blue because black right. and blue works all the time and i don't know if it's a crawdad or a bluegill or what that is but it works so yeah yeah my favorite is either black and blue which black blue majority of the time black blue is probably the ticket you know that most people throw but a lot of times I will throw just straight pearl. I love it a lot on the river, especially in dirty water. That straight pearl just glows in there. Um, clear water, I'll use a, uh, it's called silver shad. It's just basically some clear silicone with a little bit of uh, green. It almost looks like a crappie. And then a bluegill color, you know, something with a little orange in it, kind of like yours. Yeah. Same thing, but I think, you know, you might go to specialty areas like we're headed down to Gunnersville right now, and that is definitely the color to have in Gunnersville. Just fire crawl. That color has became unbelievably popular, especially on chatter baits, but we're going to throw it on swim jigs too. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how it works. I know you caught them last year pretty good on the fire crawl, didn't you? On the no jack. Not a Gunnersville, but other, no, other places. But locally. Yeah. Uh, which um, would be that one. So. Yeah, that's too bad you can't get I'm giving up that secret. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Brady. Dude. Chuck's giving out all the juice. Yeah. Okay. We've talked rods. We've talked line. We have not talked reels. Real quick. What, what size of reel is your go-to swim jig reel? And what speed? I, I stay with just seven to one. I use a Daiwa. SV Tatula. What size? It's a 100 size. 100 size. Yeah, it's 100 size. Okay. Yeah, I, with, you know, yeah, yeah, I, you, you, more than enough line on it for mm -hmm. a 50 pound braid or 18 pound fluorocarbon. I use uh, I use 7 or 8 to 1, and I use the Tatula also, usually 100 or 150 size. I I like, I actually I have a Steez that I, <laughs> that I use. I, uh, most people probably aren't going to buy a Steez, but uh, that, that's my favorite reel, and I put it on my favorite technique, and that's an 8 to 1, but it's real light, and I can throw it all day. And um, If you're going to use an 8 to 1, there's some benefit of it. Uh, number one, um, if a lot of times when they hit a swim jig, they'll kind of come up behind it, hit it, and then come right at you. It's great to have an 8 to 1 for that. The, the, the drawback is... If you're not careful, you'll fish it too fast, and you have to be patient fishing it. I think you, you have to really consciously slow down if you're using an eight to one, because otherwise you'll just burn it right by everything, and it's not flowing. You know. That's my problem. I always tend to fish them way too fast. You yeah. know. And I, you know, whatever reel you can throw a long way and can hold plenty of line is a good is a good reel when. And again, we talked in the rod section, make sure it balances your rod so that you're not fighting it. You're gonna, most of the time, you're going to kind of want your rod pointed at the bait. If you're trying to keep it shallow, you might want to tip up, but you need a balanced combo for that. Otherwise, yeah. you're going you're gonna to wear and tear on your joints and it's going to... Yeah, just pick a rod that basically you throw a spinner bait or something on. You don't have to have the perfect rod. You can, 
A seven foot medium heavy works for a lot of techniques, especially if you're on a budget, you can find tons of different seven foot medium heavies in all different price ranges. Mm -hmm. Most companies make that all purpose rod. That would be the one to grab for a swim jig. Right. You know, the all, the seven to seven foot three or four all purpose rod. It's kind of a medium, medium heavy with a little bit of tip. And then that, you know, pick a reel, a, a Daiwa or Shimano, Abu, uh, Luz. They all make good reels. Um, you can play with it, whatever you're confident in. It's not, you know, it's not super technical. Um, it's kind of, it's pretty easy to catch fish on a swim jig, actually. Yeah. Yep. You can just cast and reel if you want to. Yeah. You know, the better you get at it, the different scenarios that you'll use to try to catch fish. Okay, so you guys got anything else you want to make sure we cover today's episode or before I talk about... Uh... Well, I think Matt carries almost everything here except probably Bravarni. Mm -hmm. The Varney you can get on his website or get a hold of JJ. Yeah. Um, but I think everything else is uh, Matt carries. Yeah, and I would not be afraid to use your imagination. Um, you know, throw a throw an eighth ounce swim jig with a horny toad over the pads. I mean, mm -hmm. um, throw it with a throw it with a swimming worm on the back or a paddle tail worm. You're really, really giving up the secret yeah. there. Horny yeah. toads. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You gave up my red thing. You gotta. <laughs> yeah, you got to. Yeah, yeah. But threw it out there. <laughs> and and like we talked about, you know, Bravani makes a great one. Uh, RC makes a great a great swim jig. They're readily available. They're local. Both Ravarni Dem and RC are you know are made. Yeah, some of the US, best swim so. jigs on the market come from right around here. Yeah, no doubt about it. So and I, the the good thing about Ravarni, probably more so than any swim jig, he has the most colors. Yeah. Of yeah. any jig out there, you you can't imagine how many different colors that he has. If you can't find the right color. With a Bavarni, then, well, then you got a problem. It, then I'll make it for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or make, and Dem Jigs will make anything for you too. It just he stocks. Yeah. I don't know how many hundreds of different colors, but there's yeah, it's immense really number. impressive. There's yeah. a lot. Okay. Well, uh, we don't have a, a sale specifically to swim jigs because we've talked, you know, a bunch of different products. But what we do have is a giveaway. So um, we want to give away to somebody who's a subscriber and on our mailing list, email list, um, this 3700 size Spro box, and then four Bravarni swim jigs that JJ's picked out, and then uh, a two couple RCs. RC tackle jigs, and two then jigs. two Dem jigs. And so, then some trailers some that Matt plastics, donated. So. Eight swim jigs, some plastics, a nice 3700 size box. Should be a decent little start for you. If you've never fished a swim jig, you throw it in this box, away you go. Um, if you're not local and you win, uh, you need to, you'll be the one who covers shipping. So otherwise, figure out a way to pick it up from Matt and uh, congrats on the win. So giveaway this week, get on our mailing list, get subscribed. I might have a special little interview I roll after this. Not sure, but uh, otherwise we'll see you guys uh, next Friday, and we're talking finesse jigs. And then maybe an episode of Gunnersville. And then maybe a, a special episode with some, some other local guys that are going to be at Gunnersville. So. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Try a swim jig. They work. So, take care. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right, Shiji Gangly fans, uh, we've got a special treat for you. Um, MLF Pro Circuit Angler Gray Buck has joined us. Um, for, for a brief interview. Um, we're going to ask him maybe a little bit about swim jigs and then we also want to talk to him about he was just down in Okeechobee and he's got an event on Smith Lake next weekend and uh, just wanted to pick his brain. So, Gray, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I was looking forward to it and ready to get on to that next event down Smith Lake. Yeah, so tell so start out by telling us a little bit about you know what, what you were doing to prepare for Smith Lake. You know What do you think this event's going to be like for you? Yeah, so I think it's going to be a big pre-spawn deal um i know i've been watching the weather down there and it's warming up and i fished smith once in 2018 and when i actually went down pre-fished it was the same week and when i was there there was mostly pre-spawn fish there's a couple that were pushing up on beds so you're gonna have to kind of keep them honest and see how it's all going i can see the water level just watching the gauges it's, it's coming up quick so it'll be close to full pool if it isn't when we get there 
So it's going to just be a little bit of running around, looking, seeing what kind of water clarity you got. And I'm looking forward to it just because I like catching spotted bass. It reminds me of a smallmouth a lot. So it should be a good time. JJ, I got a question for you here. Yeah, do, does so you you mentioned spotted bass. Do you think the that you're going to need a mixed bag to to do well, or do you think in the MLF format, just catching numbers of spots will would be enough to to bring you up to the top? Yeah, so I think you're going to be able to do well in spots He's with the pro spot. circuit. We're still a five fish format, oh, so yeah. that's a little bit different than when the. Uh, was at the Bass Pro Tour was there a few years ago where those guys just hammered the spots and just caught as many as they could. But, um, yeah, the spotted bass, they're getting bigger there. They have the blueback herring. It's kind of like Lake Lanier where they're getting more established in there, so those spots are growing. Um, there's still kicker largemouth that are in there that'll probably be a player for the guy that ends up winning it, but you can do well, cash a check on spotted bass for sure. Okay. So you're going to stay offshore probably quite a bit? I think that's what I'm going to want to do. I'm going to have that Lowrance active target going, kind of shooting forward in front of the boat. You'll be able to kind of dial in those fish. Um, it's amazing what that kind of technology has advanced the fishing to at this point. So are you running all Lowrances then? I do. I got all Lowrance um, equipment on my boat. I've done that for all five years I fished the pro circuit. Back when I got my first boat, I had one of the birds on there, but it, I switched over. It's just their usability and their they're just so user friendly. You can do so much with them. They're very powerful, but they're not overly complicated. Very right. cool. Have you had a chance to play with Active Target much? I actually got one on my boat. I've been with it, messing with it the last couple of weekends. It's it's very cool. Have you had a chance to to use it much? I've used it a little bit. Um, I used the Garmin one last year on a friend's boat, just watching them for the smallmouth. <laughs> well, you can see it's unbelievable. From what I've heard, the Active Target's even better than the Garmin. So. I can't even imagine what it's going to look like when you see those fish out in front of you. Awesome. Uh, I, I'll just say one thing about I was fishing all day Saturday with it, and it was it was interesting to see you know the depth your crankbaits and jerkbaits were going, or just how fish were or weren't reacting to that offshore stuff. So very cool. Um, do you want to talk about anything you know uh, Okeechobee related? We know you're just down there a couple weeks back. I saw you caught a, a really really big one in prefish. Um, Right? Yeah, I caught it um, the last day of practice that we had, so two days before the tournament started with that off day. Um, I caught a nine. It was just over nine. It was nine one four. Second biggest fish I've ever caught in my life. And I did take that clue quite as serious as I should. I didn't know. I fished through that area after that for a while, and I didn't have many other bites. So I kind of started in a different section of the lake where I thought I could catch a couple right away. And little did I know it was going down that, right in that area. Like, heavily. There was three of the top ten guys that ended up being there. And I fished it all of the second day and probably three quarters of the first day, but I missed that morning window. And it just, I only ended up catching four that first day, and it really hurt me. Um, but, like, I was watching Miles catch Giants. I was watching a couple of the, who else was there? Uh, Gagliardi was there when that day. He had, I think, 25 or 26 pounds. And Bill McDonald was there. It was, just, it was wild. It, it was one of those tournaments where I just didn't get those big bites for some reason. I was in the area. It was just I was catching all the bucks. Were they were you, were you they catching them punching or, like, moving, winding? Uh, or? Mostly, we were mostly flipping around, like, cattail heads okay. for the fish that were spawning in there there was a little bit of punching you could do like where you saw if you look go to my youtube channel gray buck fishing you can see when i caught that nine pounder and there was a mat that had blown into those cattails and i was just throwing a one ounce angler tungsten weight punched it through there and it hit that bait i was throwing a z-man goat i don't know if you guys have checked that out it's new this year but it's got these two little kickers on there and it's great for punching but it's also good just for fishing around structure it's got this like nice little subtle movement to it really gets those fish to come into it after it which bait that's the the goat yeah yeah the z-man that goat yeah we'll have to uh we have a local shop we work with that kind of sponsors and puts us on so we'll have to have them uh check out the goat if they haven't ordered some already in like three different sizes he's yeah. already got them I was does he already have them? Yep. Yeah. yeah perfect so yeah. there you go street gang fans gray buck recommends the the goat so hey yeah. if you, that if, goes along with your swim jig there too you can put that on the back of a swim jig because Last year, I always used that Z-Man Turbo Crawl, which is a great bait, puts a lot of action out. But if you want something a little more subtle for early in the year, if you got some clear water, that Z-Man 
go with the goat size. That's the medium-sized one. Um, that would be your best bet. If you were trying to really kick a lot more water out and keep the bait high in the water column or throw it on the back of a buzz bait, then you would throw that billy goat, which mm-hmm. is the large size. Okay, right. so they name the they name it based off the actual kind of goats uh, for yeah, sizing? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> they got the uh, baby yeah. goat, the goat, and yeah. billy goat. <laughs> <laughs> Is that is that made with the same that elastic stuff? So it doesn't. So it's probably pretty durable. And uh... yeah, it, it's unbelievable. When I was fishing the tournament, I think I went through like three of them a day. That was that second day of the tournament. I caught probably twenty five fish, and it, they just hold up very well. That's good. Yeah. So so if you have the perfect tournament and you get to fish the way you want to fish, what technique is that? Um, it's, I love catching smallmouth, and I love catching them offshore. So if I can get out in 20, 30 foot and go put a drop shot rod in my hand, right. that's my favorite. I don't know if you guys saw that Sturgeon Bay tournament from last year where we did that title championship, but I was fishing up there, and I found it was the biggest small group of smallmouth I've ever found in my life. There's 100, maybe 1,000 of them down there. I don't know. And if that wind direction didn't change the last day and really pick up and it changed the current, and moved all those fish i really think i would have had a shot at winning it but uh you still did well though you ended up in seventh right yeah i ended up in seventh that set or the knockout round which was the day before the championship yep i fished probably maybe a third of the day maybe not even and i think i caught 15 i had like 60 pounds they were all four pounders it was Mm. insane and if i stayed there all day i could have caught maybe 50 fish that day but there was no reason to at that point because i was already going to make the championship round and sure. at that point i was just hoping they wouldn't move even though i kind of knew they were going to with that wind direction uh just so, i have enough great lake smallmouth experience and know that when that current changes and it moves the bait the smallies go with them so how did you like that uh, kind of blended format for the the title you know was that your first taste of the actual mlf format it was and i had it was a ton of fun. It was, I can imagine when you fish that and you're not on fish, watching everybody else's numbers go up is probably a little bit stressful. Yeah. But um, I got on them pretty quick. And even that, the third day of the tournament, I pulled up to my first spot and I knew I was about to light them up. And I was looking <laughs> at my Lawrence and dropped down. I think it was the first five casts in a row I had five fish. Wow. And it was actually, yeah, it was just, it was insane. It was, I think I had like 18 pounds with the first five I caught. <laughs> it was just it was a awesome. lot of fun so uh, so if things go awesome as we hope they do for you this year are you taking you know the invite to join the um the mlf or you know would that be something you'd want to do yeah absolutely i would love to go fish with them um i'm getting to fish the first bass pro tour event on sam rayburn next month cool this is this month at this point from finishing third in the angler of the year standings so oh nice. okay that gives i'll get another taste of it get to go fish against those guys and Last year when I was at Rayburn, I caught a nine and a half pounder, which is the biggest one I've ever caught in my life. Right. So you got to get got to get that double digit. <laughs> I know. I'm getting closer. <laughs> I've got I have two of them over nine, and they've come in less than a year now. So yeah, I got a nine three, and it was and when I jumped, I thought it was twelve, of course. So there's a big difference <laughs> in the size between a nine and a six. It's like there is. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. <laughs> All right, Gray. Well, we really appreciate you jumping in. I got we got maybe two more questions yeah. for you before we let you go. I know we promise we keep it short and sweet. My question um, is: Looking at your pro circuit schedule for the rest of the year, you've got Smith Lake, Lake Murray. You follow up Potomac, St. Lawrence River, and then the title. If you you know do well, um, is there one on there that you're uh, looking forward to more than others? There's two of them that really catch my eye. And- I would say the one I'm most excited for is probably the Potomac River, which not a smallmouth deal like the St. Lawrence will be, which I, I love doing. But the Potomac, I just kind of grew up fishing. It's like three and a half hours from my house, so it's not too far. I fish there a lot. Haven't been in the last few years, but it's what really kicked off my like fishing career. I won a BFL regional on there, and that was what gave me the money to actually have a chance at fishing full time. Like I quit my job out of college after winning that tournament. So, it'll be good to get another tournament there. Um, I fished it my rookie season in 17, and I had a great first day, and the second day I bombed. So, I kind of want a little redemption after that. 
Okay, cool. Well, what's the other one you like then? The St. Lawrence, maybe? Yeah, the St. Lawrence. I, I fish up there a lot. Um, I catch a lot of big smallmouth up there, so that's going to be just a comfort thing. I'll have a general idea of what I want to go do up there. And being, I think that one's in August. Those fish should be out pretty deep at that point and set up where I want them. Very cool. Well, I think I think Chuck's got a question for you, and then um, we will let you go. Yeah, we uh, we just got done doing a uh, swim jig uh, video here. If do you ever throw swim jigs? I throw it some um, in a situation where I throw a swim jig, at least up north. I tend to pick up a uh, chatterbait. I, I'm a big jackhammer fan, so right. I, I throw a swim jig when it gets too thick for that, but. Um, the jackhammer is my go-to. So if you were to throw a swim jig, what swim jig are you throwing? I have a mix of them. Uh, that doesn't... I don't know. Z-Man makes a good one. There's other couple brands that I use. Uh, Dirty Jigs makes a good one. So mm -hmm. it it's kind of all here or there. I, there's not one that I'm like, I have to throw. Because like I said, I don't throw it nearly as much as I throw a vibrating jig. I was going to say, it seems like that jackhammer is really taking over. Yeah, I... I got in on that jackhammer or even that just chatterbait deal pretty early. And it was just kind of, I was at Dick's Sporting Goods. I think it was in 2006. It was like, I don't know if Bread Height or Thrift might have just won something on it. It was when they first got into the store. And I picked it up and I was looking at it. Like, this thing's silly looking. I think I was in like eighth or ninth grade. And I took it down to the Chesapeake when I went fishing with my friend and his dad on their bass boat. And I was throwing it. And it was unbelievable the bites you would get. And I didn't realize at the time, like, what that bait was going to become. I don't think anybody really did, but I can't imagine if I would have just been able to, if I would have thrown it more so, even like after I caught him like that day on it down there when fish had not seen it before, it, I don't know. It, it, it's just unbelievable how many fish you catch on it now. I can't imagine what it would have been like before. I don't know. The, uh, you know, the jackhammer is coming a lot of different weights. Do you find yourself ever throwing the real heavy ones and trying to fish deep, real deep with it? Yeah, I throw the three-quarter ounce one uh, really? a decent bit. It's usually on a fishing offshore hydrilla. So um, right. down at like the Harris Chain, I used it a bunch last year. I actually caught that big one down on uh, Rayburn last year. That was on a, I think it was a half ounce, but I had a three-quarter on the deck too because that was in like eight, nine foot. And you could just work it so slow and feather it through the bottom of that hydrilla when they're really buried up in it that it, mm. it, it's a great bait. Um, the ounce and a quarter I haven't used as much, but if you're fishing ledges, that's it's a great way to get those real big fish offshore. Right. Cool. Well, I got one more jackhammer question. We'll finally let you go. I know I said one more like four times, but um, <laughs> that stealth blade, have you... You buying into that? I know you're a Z-Man guy, but are you buying yeah. into that hype a little bit? Have you tried it out? I just bought like, I don't know, 10 of them because I told myself I needed them. But, you know, have you tried that thing out? Is it, is it fish a little different than uh, the normal jackhammer? What are your thoughts? Yeah, fish is a lot different. Um, so, I'm really, it's getting close to me in that time of year where it's going to be very good. I'm going to have one tied on Smith for sure. It's going to be early in the year, kind of where you would throw that lipless crankbait. It's going to play that sort of deal where clearer water it's still cold because the vibration is not nearly as aggressive as the um, jackhammer it doesn't thump as hard but it vibrates quicker okay if that makes sense i played with it a bunch last summer and i caught a lot of fish on it and it like i said i think this coming spring is when it's going to really shine and i think there's going to be a couple of tournaments that people do really well on it and it's going to it might take a little bit to really get its name completely out there but it's going to happen faster than people expect I know there's plenty of guys catching them on it now that aren't talking about it, but we'll put it that way. Well, cool. I'm, I'm glad I, I made the investment then. We got a, an English Choice Championship down on uh, Gunnersville, and I guess a week we leave for that almost. But yeah. uh, I figured maybe that'd be a good deal to try if uh, the normal one wasn't working. So, cool. Well, um, Gray, is there anything you want to you know, talk about, mention before we let you go here? But we really appreciate you coming on. Yeah. No, if you can just um... – Follow me at Gray Buck Fishing. It's on Facebook, Instagram, and um, YouTube. That's the best way to check it all out. Cool. Well, I will link his uh, his socials in our, our video here, and uh, we really appreciate Gray, and hopefully this isn't the last time we hear from you, and good luck uh, next weekend on Smith Lake. All right. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. man. Thank you. See ya. Good luck. Bye.